In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can tether your camera to your computer for free. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time here, my name is Dan Quintero. I am a commercial photographer based in Sydney and I make videos to try and help you with your photography. And today we've got a really cool video. I'm going to show you how you can tether your camera to your computer so that you can shoot tethered. And I've done videos about this in the past. However, uh, those videos were using applications such as Lightroom and Capture One. And the one thing about those applications is that they cost money and they're quite expensive. So today I'm going to show you how you can do this for free. Now, before we go on, let's talk about why you might even want to consider tethering your camera to your computer, because it does add an extra layer of complexity, um, but I promise you it's completely worth it because it does make up for a lot of the shortfalls of the camera, particularly the screen on the back of your camera. And it doesn't matter which camera you use because all cameras have uh, a screen about the same size as this one here. Um, the issue with these screens is that you're not going to be able to check your focus properly. I mean, you can do it, uh, but you have to zoom in and out after you take the photograph to make sure that, that, uh, that the focus is correct. And then you've got to pan across the whole photograph uh, to ensure that that focus is right. So that is not a practical way of working. It's much easier when you've got everything on a big screen and you can just, you'll be able to tell straight away. Sure, you can zoom in and out as well on a big screen, but you'll be able to tell straight away if there's something wrong with the focus. Um, additionally, uh, it's not just the focus. There's going to be other components of the photograph that you also need to take into account. So uh, for example, I shoot a lot of headshots. And one of the things that I need to make sure that my customers have correct is uh, the colors, uh, we need to make sure the collars are right, that the clothes are not wrinkly, uh, if they've got lint on the clothes. Uh, sometimes with um, with necklaces, we, I want to make sure that the necklace falls right in the middle, so it's um, there's some uh, there's a symmetry to it. And all of those things are so much easier on a big screen than they are on a little screen. And let's not forget that at the end of the day, you need to get the shots from your camera to your computer so that you can do the editing. And so you're already bypassing or automating one of those steps by shooting tethered because as you shoot on the camera, the files are making their way into the computer. So what do we need in order to get this to work? Well, we're going to need a computer, we're going to need a cable, we're going to need a camera, and we're going to need some software. And the software that we're using is called Avoto. And I did a video about Avoto a couple of months ago, and I'll put the link in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, that video was in a different context. It was uh, around editing of photos. If you're not familiar with Avoto, um, it is a uh, raw converter that you can use to edit your images. So pretty much the same thing as Lightroom or Capture One, except that the AI functionality inside of Avoto is light years ahead of anything that Lightroom has or, or uh, Capture One. And that's become really my one-stop shop for editing any pictures that have people in them. Now, let me just qualify the title of this video because uh, I said that you can shoot tethered for free and you can, absolutely you can shoot for free. However, Evoto has uh, two different methods of, uh, I guess, usage, if you like. You can use it in one particular way and it's completely free or you can use it in the paid way and it just gives you some extra capabilities. But as far as shooting tethered, it is completely free. But make sure that you stick around until the end of the video because I promise I will make it worth your while because I will show you how you can get the software for free along with some bonuses. Okay, so let's talk about how we set this up. We've got our camera here. I've got my 5D Mark IV and I've got a cable. Now, the only thing that I will say about these cables, you can use whatever USB cable you want. However, uh, Every time that people ask me for help because they can't get this to work, 99 times out of 100, the problem is with the cable. I get them to change the cable and then it works. So not all USB cables are made the same. These are made by a company called Tether Tools. They specifically just make uh, things that are used for tethering and their cables are top notch. They're a little bit on the pricier side. I'll put a link in the description. It's an affiliate link if you want to go check it out. Uh, but you're welcome to obviously use whatever you've got if you've got something uh, already there. So let's plug in the uh, USB cable. I've got a USB-C on this side here, which goes into my computer. And then I've got another one here that goes into the side of the camera. So we're going to plug this in. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the camera and we're going to launch the software. Okay, so using Avoto is super simple. The first time that you launch it though, you will have to register the software and log in, but then you'll be presented with this screen here. Now in here, this is where you create your projects. And you can think of a project a little bit like a catalog inside of Lightroom. Now we've got, I've got some uh, existing projects in here, but what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new one. So we're gonna click on the plus, um, and then we are going to give it a name. I'm just gonna call it tethered shoot, and then I'm gonna click on save. And you'll notice that it comes up with this screen here. Now, uh, if you were to say, wanted to import images into this, uh, into this project from a uh, some files that you already had this is where you would drop them but we don't want to do that what we want to do is we want to go into tethered shooting because obviously we got our camera here and we want to shoot tethered so we're going to click on that and you're presented with this screen now um, what i want you to see is that it's already detected the camera here on the right hand side it says eos uh, 5d mark 4 uh, but that is automatic. So uh, whichever camera you, you connect to it, that's uh, going to identify itself as such. Um, and you'll see that you've got a bunch of different settings here on the right hand side. You can uh, expand and collapse all of these uh, little screens in here. Okay. As you can see, it gives you a bunch of different settings that are currently set in your camera. Now, one thing to understand is that you can't change any of the settings on the camera from the computer. That is something that is definitely useful and you can do with Lightroom and Capture One. You just can't do it here, but who knows, they might add this functionality in the future. So we'll just keep a look out for it. But it's not really such a big deal if you shoot uh, sort of the way that I do, which is when you're shooting headshots, you're not really changing settings on the computer anyway. You set them up on the camera because you've got your, your hand holding the camera the whole time. So any setting, any changes that you make to the settings are going to be done on the camera and not on the computer. But it does give you an overview of all the settings. And you can see here uh, that at the moment I've got an aperture of 3.2, ISO 1600, I'm, I'm on AV mode. But if I change anything on the camera and I'll just move this across, so that I can change it to manual mode. You can see that it changes on the screen as well as it does on the camera. So I'll put it back on AV, okay? And uh, the same thing, if I turn any of the scroll wheels, you can see that the aperture is changing, okay? So that just responds really, really easily. Now, although you can't change any of the settings on the screen, um, you've got this button here, which is the shutter button. So you can trigger the camera from the computer. That is handy as well. Uh, so you can trigger it from the computer or also you can trigger it from the camera itself. Most of the time I trigger it from the camera when I've got, when I'm shooting my clients uh, for headshots, for example, uh, it's only when I'm shooting products that I might use the trigger button on the computer. But shooting tethered is super simple. Uh, one of the things that you need to um, that you need to set at the bottom of this uh, screen here is the area that you, or the location that you are going to be sending your photos to. So you can click on this here and it should launch a finder in this case. Okay, I'm gonna create a new folder that I'm gonna call tethered. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for now. And I go open and any any uh, file or any, any raw file as I, that I shoot on the camera is now going to make its way to that folder on my desktop. And again, I'm sending raw files to the computer. I'm not sending JPEGs, but if you're shooting in JPEGs, then you'll get the JPEGs. But of course, we don't shoot with JPEGs, do we? Because we always shoot raw. So let me show you now. We're going to go back to and scroll to the top again. Now, although I said that you couldn't change any of the settings in here, it is nice to see everything on one screen. Um, which is um, uh, it's even it's better than what you see in the camera because mostly most of the time in the camera you have to go through different menus if you want to see a lot of the time if you want to see all this information in one screen so it's nice to have it on the computer now all i've got to do is um i've got my camera set up here on a little tripod i'm going to take a picture of my little my feet my uh nifty 50 here that's going to be my product shot and all i'm going to do is i'm going to push the shutter button here let me just look through the viewfinder make sure that i'm lined up I'm going to take the photograph and you'll notice that the photo makes its way up to the screen in here. And let me get rid of this so you can see a little bit better. And you can see now 
um, the image and it becomes really easy now to tell whether the image is in focus, it's not in focus, or there may be any other components that I wanna look at in the photograph. I can zoom in and out, very easy here as well. Um, and I can, I can zoom in and then pan around as well so I can have a look at the image in much more detail. And this is so much easier than looking at the back of the screen. If I was just to look at the back of the screen of the camera, uh, I would have to be zooming in, zooming out, panning across um, and doing all sorts of stuff that you don't want to be doing when you've got someone, um, uh, a subject with you, uh, you know, uh, because it just breaks the rapport. So, uh, that is how you do it. I'll also show you that you can actually trigger it from the computer itself. So if I click on the button here, you will notice that it takes a shot. Now, one thing that I did notice is that there is a bit of a lag of about a second after you push the button on the screen on the, using the computer for it to send the signal uh, to the camera. So that's something to keep in mind in Lightroom and in Capture One, this happens instantaneously. Now, um, the other thing I was going to say to you is that as long as you work in this uh, in this form that I'm showing you now, then you don't have to pay for anything. The, the software is completely free. What you are getting though is you're getting the raw images. I'll just bring up my finder. Uh, let me bring up the folder that we have in there. And you can see here, okay, you can see that the files are making, uh, making their way into the uh, the folder that we uh, that we set up earlier. These are unedited files, obviously the raw files. If you want edited files, then you can make some edits inside of a Voto. However, this is where you cross from uh, a, a free method of using a Voto to the paid method of using a Voto because with a Voto, they give you the software for free. And this is 100% legit. They give you the software for free. However, if you do any edits in the platform, when you export your uh, image, that is when they charge you. They, they charge you something, I think at the, at the moment, it's something like seven US cents uh, per image, which is really affordable, especially if you're, if you're shooting with a client, uh, because seven cents to have a photograph edited is nothing, okay? And the way that it edits or, or the results, I should say, of the edits that, uh, that are done inside of a Voto are really, really top notch. Again, have a look at the video that I put in the link. I'll put the link in the, in the description of this video, and which will take you to the, uh, that video, and you can see just how powerful the editing function is. But at this point, what we've done is we've set up the camera, it's shooting tethered, the images are going straight to the computer, and I've got everything inside of my folder. Okay, uh, let me go back into my folder so that I can show you. All the images are making it in there. I'll take another shot, I'll, I'll grab another shot, and you can see that that file will make its way in there. And it's actually quite fast. I'll just shoot, let me grab a few shots. I'm shooting quite fast, that was about four frames. And you can see how fast the images are making it onto the computer. And those are all the raw files in there, okay? So uh, the, again, there's no JPEGs or there's no quality loss at all because you are you you are you're transferring raw files now if you want to continue using this solution as a free solution then uh you've already got the files all you need to do now is to import these files into something like say either lightroom or if you don't have lightroom maybe you can use uh, something like the photos app inside of, of a mac or on a pc uh, or whatever you're using already to edit your images all you got to do is just drag them from here and drop them into uh, your editing suite of choice. Uh, but like I said, for me, because I shoot a lot of headshots, it makes sense for me to edit the images inside of a Voto. Uh, so I shoot with a Voto. They're already in, in a Voto uh, project. I edit there. I do, my, um, I do my choices in there because I present those to my client. And the cool thing is that because I apply a, a, an edit over the top of them, I can create a preset that then gets applied to each image as it comes into the computer. That makes it a lot better for my clients because they're already seeing something that's closer to the uh, what the final image is going to look like. And so uh, for myself, it works out in um, a better sales session because they buy more images because they like the images. Otherwise, what they're looking at is just a raw file, uh, which can be a little bit flat. You know, it lacks saturations, it lacks uh, um, contrast. And so having a preset that is applied over the top of it automatically already makes the photo look a lot better, which for myself, it's converted uh, into 
more, more uh, images being picked by my, by my client, which increases my profit. So that is the setup that I wanted to show you. It works really well. I really encourage you uh, to go in and download the software. Now don't go and just download the software um, uh, straight from the website. I'm going to give you a link uh, where you're going to get something more. So let me show you how that works. But before, uh, if you are enjoying this video or you're finding it useful and you want to help me, uh, please don't forget to click the like button. It means so much to me, more than you know. And also it helps YouTube so that it can recommend my videos to other photographers, other beginner photographers as well. And so it will be really helpful for me. And of course, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I upload a new video. But let me just show you now um, how you can get some extras out of a Voto. So when you go to the website, and you download their application, which again, is completely free, they're going to give you five credits that you can use to edit any photograph. So you get five credits along with the download. However, they were nice enough to give me a special link where if you use my link instead of the, 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 the normal one on, the we on their website, you're going to get 30 credits. Now that is a, a substantial increase on the number of images. In fact, that should be plenty for you to figure out whether a Voto is uh, the right product for you. Um, but regardless of that, the way that I've shown you how to do it today, you don't have to use any credits. If you export any images that are not uh, edited, Evoto will not use up a credit for those also. So either way, it's a win-win situation um, because you've got your raw files that are going straight into your folder. But if you wanted to do um, some edits, then you can use one of those credits uh, and it will, it will uh, export out the edited image. So I will put the link in the description of this video. Make sure that you use that one again so that you can get your 30, um, your 30 credits along. And also, if you have any questions about anything that I covered here today, do let me know. Pop them in the description of this video, in the comment section of this video, I should say, uh, because that is the best place to get in touch with me. But if you prefer, you can contact me through any of the usual social media platforms and you're going to find all the links in the description of this video. Once again, don't forget to click the like button. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time.